And each year, we had fun at the church. There was a church newsletter, and we picked winners and scores for college football games. And I had about 10 or 12 that would pick. Jack was one of them. And I would call Jack each week, each person each week, uh, what, what is your pick? We would always pick uh, Guilford College, uh, then under uh, the guidance of Charles Forbes, and always pick ACC games. Well, when I would call Jack, he was very serious about it. He often agonized over his selections. And he, it was like he was trying to pick for Sports Illustrated, not for a tin pan church newsletter. And no wonder Jack wound up on top most every year uh, of the predictors and near the top every time. Jack and Marcia, so devoted to each other, and parents and children work together in the Jensen house as a team. Jack also was a keen student of human behavior, human nature. He was a problem solver. He brought people together. And this was demonstrated last night as the hundreds of people spoke to his family to express their appreciation of their loved one. Perhaps Jack learned a lot from being a coach and from athletics. In basketball, he knew how players supported, assisted each other with a, with a screen or an alley-oop or whatever. And he knew also in everyday life, we can help each other we can help bear each other's burdens. And from golf, Grantland Rice again once said, 18 holes of match play will teach you more about your foe than 18 years of dealing with him across a desk. Perhaps this is the reason that Coach Jensen was such a keen observer. He knew so much about his fellow golfers. One statement in the newspaper said his passions were family and school, golf, and basketball. This is a true statement as far as it goes, but I would like to add other real passions. His passions were family, school, golf, basketball, church, and God. When I first arrived at Guilford College Church, I challenged the congregation. Our attendance was not so good. And I said, will there be persons in this church to set some goals, to try to be present in church every Sunday? either in this church or if you're away from home, wherever you are. Well, Jack said nothing, but he began meeting the challenge each week. I thought he was the least person, least possible person to meet such a goal because he so often was away on the weekends with his basketball or track our golf teams. It's been almost 30 years since I gave that challenge, and would you believe that Coach Jack Jensen has missed only three Sundays in 30 years, only three in more than 1,500 Sundays. My, that's passion, isn't it? That's strength. How did he do it? Really, I don't know how he did it. Every Sunday when he was in Greensboro, he came uh, to his early service at his church. When he was away with his teams, 
uh, he would find either a very early Sunday morning service or a service on Saturday evening. He was quite ecumenical. Sometimes he'd go to the Methodist church, sometimes to the Friends church, sometimes to the Baptist church. Sometimes he would, he would find a Jewish synagogue, sometimes a Catholic church, sometimes a Greek Orthodox church, sometimes the language he did not know. One time he sat through a service of two hours. They spoke only Spanish. Though the quiver in his voice, he told me not long ago, everywhere I've been, the people have been friendly. And everywhere I have been, I found God was there. And my life has been blessed. He missed the three Sundays because he was in the hospital all three of those times. Uh, one time, because of his lawnmower accident, uh, he was in surgery. Another time in intensive care. The third time, a misunderstanding, he was told by the nurse the service at Moses Cone would be, I think, at 10 o'clock. So he went there and it had been moved up to 9 o'clock that morning. But let no one miss this fact. Jack's passion for life included church loyalty and worship and service of his God. The scripture that I read in my remark, before my remarks from Psalm 27, when Jack and his basketball team were in Kansas City in 1973 to become national champions. Not long before game time, Perhaps his faith wavered just a bit as to what might happen. In his room, he noticed on a table, a desk, there was a Bible, maybe a Gideon Bible, I'm not sure, and it was open, open to a psalm, Psalm 27. And he began to read these words, The Lord is my light, and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Though a host encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Then wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. And they went on to win the national championship. He began before every game to think about those words in Psalm 27. Before the three men's golf national championships, he thought of those words. But he was not expecting some magic just from a certain formula, certain words of scripture. Because he knew sometimes he won. Sometimes he lost, but he always knew that his compassionate Heavenly Father was with him. The words of Grantman Rice were true for Coach Jack Jensen, and they're true for you, and they're true for me. For when the one great score comes to write against your name, he marks not that you won or lost, but how you play the game. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen.